Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, it is wonderful to get to be together with you in worship today. And many of our friends tell us that that's exactly what the program is to them, a true worship experience. We'll be joining a message from one of the great meetings that we're in every year. God has blessed us to be in some of the most tremendous services in churches all across the country. And this fall has been spectacular when it comes to seeing a tremendous harvest come in for the glory of God. We know the harvest is the Lord's. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. But in the end, every soul that is saved is because of God and His goodness. And the program is filled with praise and thanksgiving today for what the Lord has done for us. This is the month where that we hesitate, uh, we hesitate not to tell you that you need to lift the Lord up in all things. You need to thank God for every blessing that He gives you in your life. That's what we're going to do today. Join us as we gather together in worship and praise to Him. And also, I think you're going to be thrilled with the gift offer we'll talk about a little later on in the program. So look up something, get that information. And two great meetings this week Brian and I will be in. We want you to come and worship the Lord with us in those. We'll tell you about those later. Right now, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for the power and privilege of prayer. Oh, it is good to know that we can take time like this where we can literally come into the very throne room of God to obtain mercy and grace. The book of Ephesians says we're able to sit in heavenly places because the prayer, Lord, that is answered in our life here on earth must first start in heaven. In your name, Jesus, I ask it, believing you to do great things. Those that are in pain in their body, those that are lonely and discouraged, I ask today that you'll use this broadcast to touch their heart. Encourage them, we pray. And oh Lord, we rejoice in all that you are doing. Thank you for the souls that are being saved, for the outreach that is touching lives all around the world. And Lord, I praise you for what you are doing. I ask your blessings now on everything that's done in this broadcast. May it lift you up in Jesus' name and amen. Well, let's start things off with this song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now was grace that told my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first
sing God's praise than when we first begun. Well, just before we join the message today, I want to take a brief pause in the program to tell you about a great gift offer and some tremendous meetings that we'll be in this week. We love it when you're able to come and worship together with us. And first, I want to thank you for supporting this ministry. We cannot carry on without you, and your gifts are such a blessing to help us as we reach out to others. Now, the ministry operates through what is called a general fund. The general fund is what pays for the radio and television time. The general fund is what underwrites the expenses of being able to share the needs of many of the projects with others. And because of your support of the general fund, we're able to conduct missionary projects and home missionary projects with never charging administrative fees or any kind of handling cost. So it's important that during these few weeks, as we near the end of the year, that you pray and ask God to, to touch your heart and lead you in a direction that you can help us. We need your help. Thank you for standing with us. A great portion of this ministry carries on because these two months of broadcasting, the last two months of the year, the funds that come in for many of our friends, it's the only time we hear from you all year long. Please pray about standing together with us. And when you contact us, let me remind you of this month's gift offer. It is a book, but an unusual book. I don't know that we have ever offered a book of this nature on the program. It is a book of poetry, poems that were written by a dear friend of ours, Eddie Roush, who lives in Maiden, uh, North Carolina. And Eddie was born in the coal fields of West Virginia. He's written a number of songs and God has gifted him with pen. He's now 83 years of age and going strong for the glory of God. Many of these poems deal with the upcoming Christmas season and a lot of poems of events that's happened in his life. And I don't, again, I don't know that we've ever offered a book of poetry, but God touched our heart about making this available to you. It's free, absolutely free of charge. Now, if you're not on our mailing list, I really encourage you to be sure to let us know that you'd like to be on the free mailing list because that way we can keep you posted of gift offers like this every month. If you want this, just contact us this week. And our mailing address is Calvin Evans, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, zip code 45662. You can also go to our website at calvinevans.org to order it. And finally, you can call us toll free, 800-767-8713 to place your order. Now, also I ask that you pray about getting involved in the upcoming Food Basket Project. We have a lot of food items that have been donated, but your gift will help finish out a food basket, usually worth about $75 to $100, in many cases over $100 because in larger families it takes more food. But $25 will help complete a basket. Again, everything given to this project will bless those that are in need. We already have received more requests than we know that we have funds to fill. So I hope that you'll get involved in this project. We run it from Thanksgiving up through Christmas. We need your help. And the sooner that you respond, the sooner that we can get the items purchased and move forward. So I hope you'll send your special gift today. Now, the meetings I mentioned coming on the air, Monday and Tuesday night, Brian and I will be with our good friend, Pastor Chad Benner on Coles Boulevard in Portsmouth, Ohio. He pastors the Coles Boulevard Church of God there in Portsmouth, Ohio. And 
Chad is doing a great work there and his people, wonderful people, will be there two nights only on this coming Monday and Tuesday night. And then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we will be privileged to be at the Charles Williams Memorial Camp Meeting at the Route 5 Christian Baptist Church at Ashland, Kentucky. I really hope that you'll rally to encourage this church. I'd love to see that sanctuary packed every night. Mike Blanton and Evidence will be in to sing with us. Again, that's on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. So I hope that you'll join us there on those special meetings that's coming up this week. Now, if you need more information, contact our office. The best thing to do is call 800-767-8713. The staff will be glad to give you the information about these meetings. Well, let's join a wonderful, wonderful time we have each year at Winterfest in Moorhead, Kentucky, a message that we've not aired on the program before. I pray it will be a blessing to you. We need to follow Christ. Well, in John chapter 21, we have the wonderful account of the third visitation of Jesus, the third time that he shows himself to his disciples after that he's risen from the dead. They have an encounter like none other. They've toiled all night, they've caught nothing. Jesus tells them to cast their net on the right side of the boat. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta go fishing in the right places. Cast your net on the right side of the boat and then they couldn't hold the, the fishes that they caught. And when they came to shore, this is the wonderful passage where Jesus has food prepared and says, come and dine. Wouldn't it have been something to eat the biscuits that Jesus made? Amen. There was the fish that they ate and they partook of the fish and they had fellowship together. And now this is really the first personal encounter that Jesus has with Peter. You remember the one that said, I'll never fail you, Lord. I'll never do what's wrong. I'll stand beside of you. I'll fight for you no matter what happens. And now he has felt the Lord just as Jesus prophesied to him, said before the cock crows three times, you'll deny me. And he did deny him three times. Can you imagine the guilt that Peter has? Can you imagine the anguish that he has? Can you imagine how he dreads just meeting the Lord? And the first thing that Jesus does when he calls out to him and speaks to him in verse 15, when they dine, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, stop right there. Jesus had changed his name to Peter. Said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can you imagine Peter's already feeling guilty and the first thing he hears is Simon, son of Jonas, and he says, that's my old name back. I've gone back to my old ways. I failed the Lord and did what I said I would not do. Now some of you I know have kept every promise you've ever made to God, but I'm talking about a few people in here that you understand where I'm coming from. You tried as best you could, but somewhere along the way you felt the Lord and you felt guilt and you felt miserable and suddenly in a personal conversation, Jesus speaks to you and cuts to your heart. And when he speaks to him, he says, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, or Peter saith unto the Lord, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Peter saying unto the Lord, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, walkest whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, I don't know if you underline verses or you take notes, but notice he said, when thou shalt be old, 
Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee, thee whither, whether thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Hmm. Follow me. It's one thing to profess Christianity. It's another thing to follow Jesus. We need some disciples of Christ that will follow Jesus. Not merely make the profession and that's the end of it, but they will follow Jesus. There's people in this convention center tonight that 35 years ago when I preached the first time to some of you, you were following the Lord and after all of these years, you're still following the Lord. You not only make a profession, but you have the possession of your faith as well and you prove that faith to others by saying I'm not content with just the knowledge that I'm saved and on my way to heaven, I wanna do what the Lord would have me to do. Well, evidently, loving the Lord has something to do with following Jesus. Do you know that it's possible to follow the Lord in some areas and not love him? You don't have to be saved to read your Bible. You don't have to be saved to go to church. You don't have to be saved to give your money. You don't have to be saved to do good works. You don't have to be saved to do all of those things. It is possible to follow the Lord in some areas of your life and not love him. But it is impossible to love him and not follow him. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now he asked him three times, do you love me? He wasn't saying that just to annoy Peter or to try to somehow get on Peter's nerves. No, it's the context of what what he's saying there. You you know, I I said we wanna learn something. I know many of you know this already, but there's some that may not know it. When you look at the word love from the original text, your Bible in the New Testament has Greek. Jesus was among a culture that spoke Greek, Hebrew, and a few people spoke Aramaic. But the majority of the people under Roman rule spoke Greek. Now in the English language, we've got one word for love. And we use the word love for everything. We say, I love my dog. I love my truck. I love my wife. I hope you don't love your dog like you love your wife. I hope you love your wife more than you love your truck. We say love, but yet love is broken down by the Greeks. Four basic words, five really, but four was generally used. There, there would be a word that, uh, for love, eros, which was nothing more than a physical love that meant nothing. It was just a love of the flesh. It's the love that, that eros, the word erotic, comes from that. That's what the world is caught up in today, eros love. Nothing binding, nothing means anything. It's just a passing love of the flesh. Thank all three of you for the amen. Then there is, there, there's storge. Storge is a, is a word that's used for intimacy as far as in a family setting. It's to say, I love my children. Or your grandchildren. Boy, don't you love them. Praise God. I know why they call them grand. Amen. We, we love them. Then there's the word filio. That's the word brotherly love. That's where we get the word Philadelphia from, the city of brotherly love. It's how we love one another as people, look to one another and treat people like we like to be treated. And we follow the teachings of scripture to treat them the same way that we wanna be treated. We love and we expect love in return. It's a reciprocal love. It's the love that we say, We love him because he first loved us. We're reciprocating to the love of God. And and we have that bond that is there because of it. It is easy to love people that love you back. It's easy to love people that love you. But it's hard to love your enemies. So the Lord put another word in there. It's agape. 
That's the word that's used in John 3, 16. It is an empty, self-denying love that says this, if you don't love me back, if you don't care for me, if you don't respect me, if you don't show any love to me, if you hate me in return, if you try to persecute me, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and love you anyway. God commendeth his love, agape love, love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God sent his son and his son loved those that hated him enough to say I love you so much that I'll still bear your sins to Calvary's cross and take your sin away. I love you with a denying of myself. I empty myself for you. I prefer you before me regardless of your reaction. I can't make you love me, but I can make it hard for you not to love me. Now really what Jesus is saying here, he's saying, Peter, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? With a self-denying love, an agape love. And when Peter answered him, he answered him back and said, Lord, I love you with a filial love, a brotherly love. Lord, when it comes to being a brother, there's nobody that I've ever loved like a brother like you. Jesus said, no. (laughs) Do you love me with a self-denying love? See, he knows the road that Peter's going to travel. He knows what Peter's going to go through. He said, do you love me with that kind of a love that if it stripped you of everything, will you still love me? And he said, Lord, see, Peter was cautious with his words. Remember, he's failed the Lord now. And he said, with a brotherly love, filio love, I love you. The third time Jesus asked, he changed the word. And he said, well, then, Peter, when it comes to a filio love, a brotherly love, do you really love me that way? Peter changes his tone of voice and said, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you that way. Hmm. Why was Jesus probing into the love that Peter had for him? I'll give you three things real quick and I'm done. He said, Peter, if you're going to follow me, you have to love me. And if you're going to follow me, you've got to make your mind up to follow me in these three categories of your life. He said, first of all, Peter, follow me out of love because of your influence. When this chapter started, Peter goes fishing again. If you remember, Jesus had called them out of that occupation, told them to become fishers of men. And Peter says, after the resurrection, he almost has the tone of voice, it's over now. Boys, we put our time in and it's done. We might as well, we might as well just give up now. He said, I'm going back to fishing. I'm going back to my old occupation. The Lord is dead and gone now. So I'm going back to what I used to do. Now the only problem is, when we decide to somehow go back to living a life of not not full service to the Lord, we're going to influence people. When he did that, you read the scripture, six others followed him. Six others followed him. Do you know something? You have an influence on people's lives, either for the good or for the bad. It's up to you how you use your influence. They requested prayer for one of the young ladies in our church. She has great faith. I have never met anyone with the faith that she has. She has now influenced people all across this country and even overseas because of her faith. Just because she chose to believe God when people said, you're not going to make it. I was in the room one day after a doctor had just on his way out had just told her, you've got less than one week to live. But she told him, you don't have the say. I appreciate your knowledge. I appreciate your care. 
but you cannot do anything for me. So what harm will it do for me to believe in the one that can do anything because you can't help me? Let me tell you something, I appreciate all of the knowledge that people have. Some of you are not gonna like what I'm gonna say and I hope you'll swallow it and think about it real good. You better be careful where you run to for the influence in your life. We run to the intellectuals of this world. They may have a lot of knowledge of science and a lot of knowledge of medicine and a lot of knowledge of things of this world. But do you know what? What business does somebody that walks in spiritual darkness have walking through a head that's full of light? Here you are touched by the light of God and relying on darkness to lead you every step of your way. I'm here to tell you the world doesn't understand us. They don't know where we get this from. They don't understand it and they'll never understand it. But I don't apologize for it regardless of what this world thinks, regardless of what this world does. I have made my mind up to follow Jesus regardless, regardless of the influence of this world. Because of our influence on others. Every life here tonight will touch lives that your pastor, your preacher will never touch. Well, we hope the message today Follow Me has been a blessing to you and a challenge to you. We definitely need to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. It is, a, it is imperative in these days in which we live that we follow what Jesus taught us that if whosoever will, he can deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow him. That he said, he can be my disciple. There were thousands of people that followed Christ until he wanted them to be a disciple and live a committed life. And then uh, when he looked around after he said, you need to take up your cross, everyone had left and he turned to his disciples and said, will you also go away? He was telling them, are, are you gonna pay the price to be my disciple? And so we are asking you today, there is a price to be paid, but I can tell you it will be absolutely worth it. The retirement benefits are out of this world, knowing that we'll get to be in heaven forever and ever with our Lord and Savior and our loved ones that have went before us. And if you're not ready to meet the Lord today, I encourage you, ask him into your heart. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. The Bible says he's faithful and he's just to forgive you. So please ask him into your heart today. And if you have done that, please let us know. We'd love to rejoice with you. God bless you. Until next week at the same time over the same station, we will uh, come back with a, continuing the message on Follow Me. And we hope you have a wonderful day in the Lord. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.